Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. Hey guys, so it's the end of December 2015 and time for the monthly layout update. Uh, I got a couple things to show you this month of uh, news rolling stock uh, Intermountain 48 foot uh, Husky stack, as well as the Intermountain slash A line uh, Thrall 40 foot 5 pack. Both those came in last month, so we'll take a look at those. Uh, I got a photo of the uh, construction progress on my basement. The foundation's done, so we'll show you that. I'm pretty excited about that, and uh, some of the the updated uh, plan I've been working on. I made quite a few changes since the last time we talked about it, so I'll show you the updated plan for my next layout. So we got a lot of stuff to cover. So let's uh, get started here. Hey guys, so these were a recent uh, release by Intermountain. And they are the uh, 40 foot standalone husky stack. This one's in the TTX paint. So I got a few of these from Intermountain. Not bad cars. Uh, my first impressions, I ran them a bit. They're fairly light, just like the old uh, A-lines were. And the detail is comparable to the uh, Walther's NSC. So let's take a look at the car. So that's the new uh, HO scale 48 foot Husky stack from uh, Intermountain guys. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, Intermountain slash A-Line 5 pack that's behind it. So this one's also in uh, TTX paint, like the other one. There, Intermountain A-Line. And just like the old ones, the packaging is the same. So I've only got one from the uh, from the older run of A-Line with the same model, but I don't think much has changed. I'm pretty sure it's the same tooling, same, uh, you can expect about the same from the cars. They're, they're fairly light and the detail is similar to the Walther's NSC cars, you know, with the grate, the, the grating is just uh, one piece cast plastic, no line, air lines or anything for brakes and the, uh, the the way they connect the cars together is just a simple uh, quite a simple system of just a pin and a, and a hole so we'll take a look at that so there's the B end of the car printing is definitely nice So that's all the uh, new rolling stock I got over the last month, guys. So next, we'll uh, I'll show you a picture of the progress on my uh, new basement, and then we'll take a look at some of the the newest uh, version of the layout design. So you can see from that photo, uh, they're making pretty good progress. It's exciting, pretty cool uh, seeing it in person and actually kind of try to envision uh, what's going to go down there or the different things I could do with it. 
my, my brother and I actually went down there with a big tape measure and we were kind of measuring stuff out and seeing how stuff fit in there and it was pretty cool. Uh, it's going to be a nice space. There's a lot of a lot of potential, that's for sure. So as far as planning goes, um, I haven't, some things have changed since last month. So I was going to show you guys. Um, so this is what I was showing you last time. And I pretty much scrapped the CN uh, part of this this design. And what I didn't like about it was uh, trying to cram this yard on the CN side of it. It's just the Saskatoon yard that I was going to model, you know, the real things like five or six miles long. You just, it's almost impossible to do that correctly in HO scale. And there's just so much uh, going on there. Like there's an intermodal yard, there's diesel tracks, there's 46 yard tracks. Like there's just an insane amount of stuff. And it's just too hard to fit into half a mile in HO scale. So I guess what I'm uh, trying to do, so I scrapped that idea for the prairies. So what I'm trying to do is fit the location I'm going to model to the area I have available rather than the other way around and trying to cram something, a prototype into my space that won't fit and the curves and everything aren't right. So what I came up with, I started looking at Jasper CN, which is still in Alberta, it's in the mountains, and uh, east of Jasper, for about eight miles, it's all double track, so it's completely prototypical. And the Jasper yard itself is uh, not very big, so you could compress it lengthwise, and you wouldn't have to compress it at all widthwise, which is awesome. So I can do a really cool model of this. And... Uh, so I've got the whole Jasper yard, which would be uh, almost 30 feet, uh, almost a 30 foot long yard, with nine yard tracks, crossovers, uh, via. There'd be a via. The via station would be here, and you'd have the ability to yard a full train, a uh, full 25 foot train is what I'm kind of going for, is a maximum train length. And what I did was sacrificed uh, three three staging tracks. And that allowed me to, instead of have the reverse loop here, eating up all this good potential layout space, doubled up the reverse loop around it and just have two tracks, because it's all pretty much I can fit width-wise. Otherwise, I start to really cram this aisle here. But uh, so you have, what that does is saves, you can, this is all good layout space here. So you're saving like 10 feet. So I really liked how the yard, how Jasper Yard fit in there. Of course, this is all prototypical east-west and everything. And this would be like you're bringing a train in westbound into Jasper and you, they yard them here. It's prototypical for the trains to uh, either yard, stop, get a new crew, and then continue eastward, or sorry, westward. And it's also prototypical for VIA to come in on this track as well as the, uh, so the Canadian and the uh, short two-car, usually, Skeena train, which parks here in this crossover section. So I really like how this worked out for the CN side. The, the mainline run is still isn't huge, but I think it'd be a really cool operation. Uh, you know, like really prototypical kind of feel for the mainline trains. I think it'd be a lot of fun to operate or just have train a train looping if you want. Still have the, the reverse loop the way it was before with five tracks here. So you'd be able to yard four trains and have one for a run through. And uh, these are all prototypical locations, and the uh, the blocks are prototypical as well. So you'd have the actual signals just like the real CN mainline. You can see there, uh, these would be a double dwarf signal. But the blocks would work uh, for CTC or for ABS. And uh, the blocks are made long enough so that one train will fit in there and it won't tie up two blocks so it'll work just like the real thing so this is English this is a real place too uh, it's a set of set of crossovers so it's uh, it's four or like quadruple triple head uh, searchlight signals and then the uh, the final control point would be um, another couple miles down the main and it's this cool signal bridge that has uh, one 
ABS double head searchlight and then three single heads and this is all 100% prototypical for CN so I think it'd be pretty cool even though the main line's short uh, they still have the opportunity to switch in Jasper or yard trains in Jasper which would be pretty cool I think that would uh, more than make up for the shorter mainline run on this side of the layout so I'm pretty sure this is what I'm gonna do another bonus is it's uh, super scenic just east of Jasper it's just gorgeous scenery and uh, mountains beautiful rock cuts everything I love and uh, it's been photographed a lot and a lot of people have taken videos there too which goes a long way when you're modeling if you get got access to a lot of photos to use for reference so I'm pretty sure I really like the way that this has turned out so I'm pretty sure this is what I'm going to do for CN the CP side hasn't changed since I talked to you guys uh, so this uh, I did add this reverse loop in here so this would be underneath the CN layout and it would be separated by seven inches so you, and this would and it would be a cutout so you could just crawl under if you really had to get under there I don't like how this would be all hidden and your switches are hidden so I might have to try and figure something out like if I could double it up on below the CN one here at least you could pop out through the cutout but I haven't decided yet and I'm not certain that this is what I'm going to do for CP on the CP side of it either but the CN side at least I've made some uh, some progress on making a decision because man is it difficult it is way harder than I thought it was going to be um, once you have the space you know you always just thought I always just assumed I was like oh if I could just get the space I'd have all these great ideas but it's really really hard to nail something down and actually decide what you're going to do with it because there's just so many options so yeah I'm still going to keep working on the CP side of it trying to decide what I'm going to do there but uh, at least I've made a little bit of progress on the CN side and this has been uh, enjoyable this is kind of the only modeling I've been doing um, is just kind of working on this and trying to figure out different ways to route the peninsulas and yeah it's been kind of a definitely a work in progress and I'm sure a lot more things are going to change before I ever uh, put a board into the wall so so that wraps up this layout update video guys hopefully I'll have another uh, construction progress photo to share with you next month I'm going to keep plugging away on this layout plan and see where I can get as always, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.